Welcome back guys, it's the Tightwad and today we're going to be spraying a polycrylic finish using the Home Right Finish Max Super Sprayer on some old barn wood. Now I got this old barn wood from my Papa Benton's land and you can see it is siding from an old home and it has white paint on it. I'm not sure what year the home was built or when this was painted, so I don't know if it's lead paint or not. So what I want to do before using it in my home is to seal it in with a polycrylic so it's no longer dangerous uh, for people that rub against it or get around it in the dust from it. So what I've done so far is I went in and lightly sanded this down wearing an appropriate respirator. And then I took some denatured alcohol and some shop rags and cleaned it off really good. So when I rub my finger on it, I don't get any of that chalky residue. But I know that if I brush the finish on this, it's probably gonna smear everything around and just make it look muddy and murky. So instead of brushing it, I am gonna be spraying it today. Uh, this is my new, again, Home Right Finish Max Super Sprayer. They sent me to try out. I've already used it on one project to spray a, a specific color that a customer needed to match their nursery that I couldn't find in spray paint. And it worked beautifully, but it was a small project and I was just testing it out. So today I'm gonna be using it again to spray this finish on here. And then I've got some other projects in mind for this as well. Super easy to use. It comes with, the tip that's already in it is the green tip, but it also comes with a few other supplies. Comes with a nice top in case you wanna leave your product in the container. Comes with some brushes to clean it with. And I just put them in a Ziploc bag for easy storing. It comes with a different tip on it. And then it also comes with uh, two different size spray nozzles. Functionality wise and parts wise, it's a very simple sprayer, but in just the couple of projects I've used it for and from reading reviews and seeing other people using it, it is super easy to use. So let's go ahead and get started. So to start, I'm gonna get my barn wood out of the way. I'm actually gonna go ahead and put it outside where I'm gonna be spraying. I'm gonna now add the finish to the spray gun or actually to the canister. So I'm just gonna unscrew it here and set it on my counter. This is a new can and I haven't had issues with any kind of clumping and this polycrylic. Uh, this is one of my favorite products to finish with, by the way. Just gonna grab a shop towel here and I'm gonna pour some of this in. I'm pouring it through a strainer just in case it has any clumps in it. All right, with my finish added, uh, I'm gonna use the tip that's already in it and I'm just gonna screw this on. I do wanna show you a couple of things about this sprayer before we get started. Uh, the tip on it here can be rotated and that is to make it spray this direction or this direction. So I want the wide fan today for these boards. So I want it to, to fan up this direction. So when I'm going, I'm getting nice wide lap marks. Another thing is the control right here. It's got a plus and a minus and all you do is simply roll it up or roll it down to adjust the amount of volume coming out of the sprayer. I pulled out this piece of cardboard to spray on to make sure that number one, my spray direction is the way that I want it. And also to check and see if the volume needs to be adjusted here before I start spraying on my boards because I don't want to mess them up and get a lot of runs with overspray. <laughs> And I'm gonna go ahead and adjust it down just a little bit. What I'm spraying today is a lot thinner than the latex paint I was spraying before. So it came out pretty heavy. So I'm gonna give it one more test pass here. And you can see the first pass with this polycrylic came off really thick and milky. And the second one came off exactly like I want it. So I just rotated it down a couple of clicks and we're good to go. You can see this wide band here is already starting to drip and that's not what I want on my finished product. The beauty of this sprayer is that all that needs is power to run. Uh, it's sucking in the air through the filter back here and then it's spraying out the front and it's picking up from the very bottom of the canister. I love that the, the nozzle in here goes straight down and angles towards the front. So it's picking up from the front because typically you're leaning forward to spray. If you do need to lean backwards, you can always spin that nozzle to pick up from the back too. But I've got it pointing towards the front today so that it'll pick up the paint a lot easier, so that it'll pick up the polycrylic a lot easier. 
when spraying any kind of finish or paint, you never want to start spraying with your nozzle facing towards the board because it'll surprise you and get a big puddle really quickly. So you always want to start off the end and finish off the end. So you see how quick that was to get two passes on the board. I did a overlap because my fan wasn't quite wide enough. So I did actually three stripes on each board. Um, but that's good enough for the first coat. I'm just gonna leave my product in here. I'm gonna put a piece of saran wrap over the tip so that it doesn't dry out, but I'm gonna be coming back out in about 30 minutes to spray another coat on here because the polycrylic tends to set pretty quickly. Since it's cooler here in Georgia, I took the pieces inside and let them dry for about an hour. And hopefully you can see that it's got a nice satin finish on the boards. And it looks like it coated really well with one coat, but I'm gonna add a second coat just to make sure I didn't miss any spots. Since I coated pretty well already, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down a little bit more because I just need a really wide coat to make sure I didn't miss any spots on the boards. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this coat sprayed on. One more thing I do want to mention is that anytime you spray finish on a board, you need to spray all sides. So you notice I just did the tips on the ends but I previously brushed the same exact um, product on the back of the boards and I put two coats on there as well. And the reason for this is you don't want moisture getting in from the back and then leaking through or, or sweating through to the front. So I want the full thing sealed. So the back is now done and now the tops are done. I'm gonna take these inside and let them cure and I'm gonna show you what I do to clean the Home Right Finish, Finish Max Super Sprayer. The first step to cleaning is to get your product back in the original can. And this stuff is expensive. It's about uh, 17 or $18 a can for the quart of this polycrylic. So I definitely don't want to waste any. So I'm just going to unscrew this. And you'll see earlier when I was talking about the, the pickup straw, see how it faces towards the front. So when I angle down, the pickup straw actually leans into, into the product. Whereas if I was spraying up, I could simply spin that pickup straw. I'm gonna use some of these blue towels to set the pickup straw on, because it is gonna leak out a little bit until I get it clean. So I'm just gonna set it up like this and let it continue to drain while I pour the product back into my container. Now this particular product that I'm using is water-based. So all I need to clean it with is soapy water. I don't need any kind of mineral spirits or paint thinner um, like I would have to do if it was an oil based. So now I'm just going to empty it in here and then I can rinse this out either with the water hose or in the sink. I will wipe it out with one of these towels first to get as much as I can out. So I'll just take a wipe here, wipe around the inside and then go down and get the bottoms as well. And then on this piece, all it does is twist and come off. So I could easily have installed this in this direction if I was going to be spraying up and that way it would pick up from the back of the canister instead. So this is a great option to be able to rotate this whichever direction you need. Then the next part I need to remove is the front tip here and it simply unscrews lefty loosey. And it comes in three parts, so it's got this ring, it has the nozzle here, and then this is a springed piece. So my spray tip is right here. I do need to remove this, and then there's, a, there's an opening behind that that leads down to the pickup that I need to clean out as well. It comes with a little tiny wrench here that fits on to this spray tip so it's easy to remove. If not, you could grab a little adjustable wrench 
and use it as well. So I'm going to pull that out. For now, I'm just going to drop them down in the canister. And then I'll take them upstairs and rinse them out. And I store it, taken apart, so that any water that's left inside it once I'm done dries out really easily. Now that I have everything rinsed out really well, I put it all back together and I put warm water inside here. I'm gonna go spray it to make sure that all the internal pieces get nice and cleaned out uh, and ready to go the next time. After I empty out this water in here, I will then store it and let it air dry for about a day and then I'll put it up in my box for storage. After spraying the polycrylic, I wanted to make sure that I tried a latex paint that has not been thinned. So I have some uh, latex primer in here and I have these United States cutouts that I just scrolled on my scroll saw for my Benton Art Company. And now I'm going to try to adjust the sprayer to spray a thicker latex paint, um, which is a primer on all of these states. So I've got my piece of test cardboard here. I'm gonna give it a quick pass. Turn my nozzle, spray more in a fan. And I'm happy with those results. So I'm gonna start laying paint on these United States. All right, I wanted to do one so that I could check for coverage first and see how I was doing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of them all at the same time. All right, I'm happy with the coverage for the most part here. You can see I bumped it with the canister of the sprayer right there. But again, this is just my primer, so I'll sand that out before I put on a top coat. Got a little bit of grass in it because I'm painting outside. But Ideally, I would have a paint booth, but I'm not that fancy. So I'm gonna let this dry and then I'll get some more footage showing you if there's any texture left on it or if it smooths out nicely. But it looks like I got a nice thick coat and then I should be able to spray my top coat as soon as this is dry. These have been drying for a couple of hours now and you can see that everything's smoothed out on them very nicely. Feels just like I used my normal spray paint I will need a light sanding on them with a high grit sandpaper, and then I'll come back with my top coat of paint. But it's incredible how easily this sprayer works to get the job done. After using this home right sprayer on three projects, I can say that I'm definitely impressed with the ease of use and the evenness of the coats of spray that it puts out. And I'm uh, extremely excited to have it as part of my arsenal now. So I hope you guys found this video helpful in this uh, somewhat of a review video and also how-to video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Post any questions you might have in the comment section below. If you want to check out the HomeRite sprayer, uh, check the link in the description and in the pinned comment. And if I post any follow-up videos, I'll also link those in the pinned comment and in the description as well.
Click any of the videos shown on the screen right now and they'll open right up on your device. So and I hope you guys have a great day.